السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Hello my dear friends This is Dr. Huda Today is an English lesson for grade 4 from Journeys Volume 4 Let's start ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلو الأقضة من لساني يفقه قولي بسم الله The title of our story today is called The Screech Owl Who Liked Television From the Tarantula in My Purse by Jean Craighead George and Selection Illustrated by Tim Bowers Essential question, how do animals influence your opinion of nature? Meet the author Jean Craighead George. Jean Craighead George has made a lifelong study of animals, their habitats, and the way they interact with people. I have discovered I cannot dream up characters as incredible as the ones I meet in the wilderness. She says, George has kept and cared for more than 173 wild animals. Meet the illustrator Tim Bowers. Tim Bowers loves to tell stories with his artwork. As a child, he enjoyed the many animals at his grandparents' house, including an African grey parrot and a squirrel monkey named Jojo. Many of Bowers' illustrations feature animal characters, including a brave skunk, a dog that makes hats, chickens in a diner, and now a screech owl who likes television. Target vocabulary. Presence, disbelief, tempted, biologic, biological, endeared, arrangement, pounced, utter, hastened, and incident. Target skill, fact and opinion. Decide if an idea can be proved or if it is a feeling or belief. Target strategy, infer or predict. Use text clues to figure out what isn't directly stated by the author. Genre, narrative non-fiction. Narrative non-fiction gives factual information by telling a true story. Factual means true. Set a purpose. Set a purpose for reading based on the genre and what you want to know. Children's author Jean Craighead George remembers how her three children, Twig, Craig, and Luke, raised a very special owl inside their house. Their house. Twig's favorite pet was a small gray screech owl. Had he not fallen from his nest before he could fly, he would have lived in the open woodland, deciduous forest, park, town, or river's edge. But he had landed on a hard driveway instead and then and ended up in our house. He was round-eyed and hungry. He looked up at Twig and gave the quivering hunger call of the screech owl. Twig named him Yammer. Quivering means shaking, okay? Yammer quickly endeared himself, himself to us. Endear means to make uh, himself loved. He hopped from his perch to our hands to eat. He rode around the house on our shoulders and sat on the back of a dining room chair during diner. During dinner. So... We can now understand that Yammer is a male owl and he lives with the family. Uh, he was very special for them and he, was, uh, he made himself dear and uh, loved by all of them. Okay? And they found him on the driveway, so they took him home and they are, uh, they are raising him. Before the green of June burst upon us, Yammer had become a person to twig, who felt all wild friends were humans and should be treated as such. So twig, the girl, uh, liked Yammer and she thinks that he is, as he, uh, he is a person for her. He is very special and as if he is a person, not just an owl. Okay? Wild animals are not people, but twig was not convinced. One, sat one Saturday morning, she and Yammer were watching a cowboy show on television. They had been there for hours. Twig, I said, you've watched TV long enough. Please go find a book to read or do your homework. My, vo my voice was firm. I kept the TV in my bedroom just so the children wouldn't be const constantly tempted to turn it on as they had when it was downstairs. So now we can see that the mother is 
who is telling the story is talking. She says that she kept the TV in her room to, uh, to limit uh, her children from watching TV all the time. And Twig was sitting in her room watching a cowboy show with the owl. Okay, and Twig felt that the owl is a person to her. She believed this. Reluctantly, Twig got to her feet. At the door, she turned and looked at her little owl. He was on top of the headboard staring at the screen. A rider on a horse was streaking across the desert. From an owl's point of view, the bear were mouse-sized. So uh, the owl was watching TV with Twig. Uh, and he was watching the cowboy show and he saw the rider on the horse uh, streaking across the desert or running across the desert. And he saw it as if it is a uh, size of a mouse. It's, it seems as if it's the mouse for her, for him. How come Yammer can watch TV and I can't? She asked, pouting. Hardly had she spoken then, Yammer pushed off from the headboard, struck the bray with his talons and dropped to the floor, bewildered. Twig rushed to his rescue. She gathered him up and hugged him to her chest. With a scornful glance at me, she hurried to her room. The small owl's round yellow eyes were peering from between her gently curled fingers. So now we can see that uh, when uh, Yammer, Yammer saw uh, the TV, he hurried to it and he saw that it's a mouse. So he wanted to um, catch the bray and, went, and uh, went to catch the bray and he dropped to the floor. And then the girl rescued him and took him from the ground and hugged, uh, hugged him. And she, she took him to her room. Twig was right. This otherworldly creature was a person. Wasn't his menu of mice and crickets included on the shopping list? Didn't he have his own bedroom in the gap between Roger Tory Peterson Field Guides in the living room bookcase? Didn't he run down into the cozy blanket tunnels made by Twig at bedtime and utter his note of contentment? And didn't he like TV just as she did? So the mother now is talking. Uh, she believes that Twig was right when she said that uh, Yammer is a person for her. She says now he, uh, that he has uh, a menu on the shopping list they make. They buy him mice and crickets to eat, right? And he has a, a bedroom of his own between the books in the bookcase. And he runs between uh, the cozy blanket tunnels when he sleeps beside Twig. And he uh, utters his note of contentment means he me uh, it, it means that he sh he shows that he's happy or pleased when he is uh, he is in the cozy blanket, and he watches TV just like her. Stop and think. Fact and opinion. The last paragraph on page two hundred eighty two contains both facts and opinions. Use your graphic organizer to distinguish the facts from the opinions. Then, explain how to verify the facts. Most scientists are taught not to read human emotions into animals, but sometimes they wonder about the truth of it. When you live with animals, they often seem quite human-like. So the mother is still talking. She, she says that scientists... Uh, don't like to read human emotions into animals. This means that they, they don't want to say that animals have emotions like humans, okay? But sometimes they doubt what, uh, what they are saying. Later that morning of the TV incident, I looked in on Twig and Yammer. So the mother went to watch Twig and Yammer, okay? The owl was perched on the top of her open door Breening his feathers. She was sitting with her chin in her hands looking at him. So Yammer was sitting on the top of the door of, uh, of the room. Okay. And. Um, Twig was sitting with her chin in her hands looking at him. I feel sorry for Yammer. She said 
He's stuck in this house. He needs to see, to see things that move like they do in the woods. So I said, so I finished my homework and made my bed. Can Yammer and I watch TV? I heard myself whisper, yes. So the girl twig uh, asks her mother to watch TV, takes her permission to watch TV, asks her permission to watch TV with Yammer again as she finished her homework and she made her bed. And the mother agreed. When I told Twig she could, she could watch TV that day of the cowboy incident, she stood on her desk and held up her hand to Yammer. He stepped onto her finger. As she climbed down, she touched his toes and the talons curled around her forefinger. I wish I had Yammer's feet, she said. Then I could sit on the teeny tiny branches of the apple tree. So the girl went to uh, watch TV with uh, Yammer and uh, when Twig stood on the desk so that uh, she can take Yammer from, uh, from on the door. Okay, he was sitting on the door so she can take him and she gave him her, ha uh, she gave him her hand so that he can step on it. And then she took him uh, to watch TV and she says that she wishes that she had Yammer's feet so that she can sit on teeny tiny branches or very small branches on the apple tree. Suddenly, her brother Craig shouted, Roadrunner's on! Yammer loves Roadrunner, Tweek said, and dashed to the TV in my bedroom. Dashed means runs or go very quickly, okay? Yammer flapped his wings to keep his balance. His balance. And the two joined Tweek's brothers, Craig and Luke, before the television. So all uh, the, uh, the brothers, uh, Craig and Luke, went with Twig to watch TV. Luke, not quite four, patted the pillow next to him. So uh, Luke was uh, less than four years old. He patted the pillow, means he tap tap or uh, just like hitting the pillow and she, uh, as if he says, uh, put him here. Okay, put him here, he said. A chord of music sounded. Lights flashed and all eyes, particularly Yammer's, were riveted on that zany bird running on and off the screen. So all of them were watching TV. The owl and Craig and Luke and Tweek. Second to Roadrunner was Yammer's love for the shower. So Yammer loved watching Roadrunner on TV and he also loved uh, the shower. He would fly into the bathroom when he heard one of us turn on, this, turn on the spray, sit on the top of the shower curtain rod to orient himself, then drop into puddles at our feet. Eyes half closed, he would joyfully flip the water up and into his wings and dunk his breasts until he was soaked. A wet screech owl is as helpless as an ant in an in an ant's lion's trap. Having bathed, yeah, Yammer could not climb out of the top. We would have to pick him up and put him on a towel by the hot air vent to dry. So Yammer likes to, sh uh, to uh, the shower. If he is, hears anyone in the shower, he flies and go to the shower room and stands on the curtain, uh, on the curtain rod, okay? And then he drops in the uh, into the bottles of water beside their feet. And then he, be uh, he becomes soaked in water and he cannot fly. So they have to pick him up and dry him. This was a perfectly satisfactory arrangement until we failed to tell a visitor about Yammer's passion. In the morning, unaware of his quiet presence, she showered, stepped out of the tub and left him there. It was almost noon before we discovered him. Craig promptly put up a sign, please remove the owl after showering. It hung over the shower faucet, faucets for as long as Yammer lived with us. So a visitor came to visit them and uh, she took a shower. And she didn't, um, she didn't notice that uh, Yammer was beside her in the shower room. And he was left there uh, till noon. After that, Craig 
put a sign called uh, and a sign please remove the owl, uh, the owl after showering and it was left there as long as Yammer lived with them. Yammer was devoted to Twig. He sat on her shoulder at breakfast, flew to her hand for food when she whistled for him and roosted on the window curtain rod of her room when he was not watching TV. So Yammer loved Twig and he was all the time with her. He did like Craig, uh, Craig's train set, however. He also liked Craig's train set. He had reason to. It moved like a garter snake. The tracks that Craig balanced on his big wooden blocks ran under the bed, then out across the floor, past the chest of drawers, over the main line, and back under the bed again. When Yammer heard the train start up, he would fly to the back of the chair in Craig's room. Crouched to drop on this bray, he watched engine and cars ply the, the precarious route. The blocks would shudder as the little black locomotive swung around a curve or speedily crossed a raven into the open stretch between the wall and the door. Yammer never struck his bra this bray. The train was not the right size. Yammer was programmed to eat mice, insects, small snakes and arthropods. The big owls like the great horned beard and barn owls, best of my childhood, might have pounced on Craig's train. But not Yammer. He just sat and watched. In a house that lacked diving blue jays and scurrying chipmunks, Black Darling, as Craig called the Lionel train, was biological diversity to Yammer. His head fairly spun off his shoulders as his eyes followed the speeding engine around the room, under the bed and out again. So in this page, we can see that Yammer liked Craig's train set. He always watched the, the train when it starts up. But he always watches it without... He watched it as if it was a bray, but he never struck this bray because he was very small for it. Okay, and the mother says that uh, if Yammer uh, was another uh, owl, for example, a bigger owl like Great Horned or Bard or Barn Owl, these were the best of her childhood. The, uh, he might have bounced on Craig's train, but he never, but he didn't do this because he was small. He only sat and watched it. Okay, it was for him uh, a biological diversity means as if it was another animal for him. So he always watched it. He always watched it from distance and he never uh, moved to struck, uh, struck this prey. Okay. Author's craft. A simile compares two unlike things using the word like or as. For example, the setting sun was like an orange falling down from the sky. Find an example of a simile on this page. So a simile means that so, uh, two different things or two unlike things and you say uh, the, uh, you compare them to each other. We have a simile in this page when he says it moved like a garter snake. So now he compares uh, the train to a garter snake. Often the train wrecked, Craig ran it on the bleeding edge of, a, uh, of disaster and when the building blocks shifted too much black darling would jump the tracks knock down the trestles and carin through the air before coming to rest on its side wheels spinning with every crash yammer took off for craig's door top where he would study the dead engine until its wheels stopped turning then he would look away when the train did not move, it wasn't there. So all, he always, um, Yammer always watches the train as it is knocked off uh, when, it is, uh, when it is moving over the blocks. One evening, a, uh, a screech owl's plaintive call of spring floated through our windows as we were going to sleep. The voice came from the spruce trees on the other side of the lane. 
The next day at breakfast, I put down my fork and leaned toward Twig, Craig, and Luke, smiling. They put down their forks and looked at me, with that, oh boy, here it comes expression on their faces. It's time, I said. The eyes widened, the fingers tightened on the table edge to set Yammer free. So the mother now uh, hears a screech owl in the trees beside uh, their house. So she, she decides that it's time uh, that Yammer gets free and they set him free to the forest. And now she tells her children, Twig, Craig and Luke, that it's time to set Yammer free. No, 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 the third voice in the round came. Don't let him go. He'll stay around, I said. It will be lovely to have Yammer in our woods flying, calling to us at night and coming to the window for a mouse or two. No, 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 no. Maybe he'll, he'll ever have owlets and bring them to us. Silence as they thought about that. I'm going to feed him on. The winds, uh, the window sill to, uh, of my bedroom for a few days, I said. When he knows he can always get food there, I'll open the window and he'll fly off. I'll whistle and he'll come back. No, no, said Twig, he won't. Yes, he will, I said. Don't you remember Bobo Twig? No, she said. I was just born when we had Bobo. Bobo was a great horned owl, I explained. She lived with us for four years at Vassar College, and then we let her go. Don't let Yammer go, said Twig. Bobo came back every evening to be fed. I went on. When she found a male great horned owl in the nearby woodsy graveyard, she moved off the campus and into the woods with him. They raised two owlets in an old crow's nest. No, no, shouted Luke and Craig. Don't let Yammer go, said Twig. A week later, we met in the bedroom. Yammer has been eating mice and chicken on the window sill for a long time now, I said. The moment has come to open the window. They looked at me as if I were an owl executioner. So in this page, we can see that the mother is trying to convince the children that uh, uh, it's right to set the owl free. And she, to, uh, she tells them that she, had, she once had an owl called Bobo. It was a great horned owl and it lives, uh, she lived with them for four years at the Vassar College. And then she let her free and she came back to them again and... Um, to get fed and she had two owlets with a male great horned owl and they lived uh, um, beside the canvas and they, uh, they uh, she fed Yammer uh, on the window sill for a long time now uh, for uh, one week and then it's time to set him free so when she sets him free uh, he is going to uh, she, she tells them that he is going to come again to be fed again Stop and think, infer or predict. Do you think Yammer will fly out the, uh, the open window? If he does, will he return to the family regularly? Why or why not? He'll be back. He's very hungry. Eyes widened in disbelief. No one spoke. He'll fly to the basswood tree to get his bearings, I said quickly. Then I'll whistle the, the come get the food call and he'll be right back. No, don't, said Twig. We'll feed him just a little bit tonight, I continued. He'll still be hungry tomorrow and he'll come back for more. We'll do this every night until he can hunt on his own. I was facing an audience of skeptics. Skeptics means that, that they don't believe. Uh, skeptics means that they don't believe her or uh, they uh, are doubting uh, her, uh, her words. So she has, to, she has to convince them. I was facing an audience of skeptics. I had to convince them. When I was a kid, I hastened to say, we had a born owl named Windy. He was Uncle John and Uncle Frank's lovable owl. 
They set him free and he came to the sleeping porch. Every night to be fed, Yammer will too. Yammer's not a barn owl, said Craig. That evening we let Yammer go. Twig was hopeful. She trusted that Yammer would come back. Craig was still skeptical. But Luke was brightened by a new awareness rising in him. Freedom. The owl would go free. He liked that. So um, they doubted what she says. They uh, didn't like the idea because they doubted that the, the owl will come again. But... Luke liked the idea because uh, he thought that freedom is a good idea for the owl. As we opened the window, Yammer blinked his golden eyes and swung his head in a wide circle. He saw the basswood tree, Mr. Ross's spruces, the sky, and the rising moon. Spreading his wings, he floated into the twilight. We never saw him again. So Yammer left and he didn't return again. Now it's your turn, wild or not. Write about animals. Do you think it's right for people to keep wild animals as pets, as Twig did with Yammer? What are the positive and negative effects of keeping a wild animal? Write a paragraph that explains your opinion. Use support from your own experiences and other readings. Yammer goes free. Make a comic strip. What do you imagine happened to Yammer after he flew away? In a group, brainstorm different versions of Yammer's future adventures. Discuss which version you think is most likely to happen and why. Then make a comic strip of the adventures with each group member contributing a section. Add captions and speech balloons as appropriate. Turn and talk all about owls. Discuss with a, uh, with a partner some facts you learned about screech owls. Which fact did you find most surprising? How did the facts affect your opinion of owls in general? Discuss whether you think the author does a good job of teaching readers about owls and their habits. What do you still want to know about these birds? And now we've come to the end of our story. I hope you liked it. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share the video with your friends. Thank you dear. Bye.